Hi friends, welcome to the video lectures on technical thing. So after the completion of uh, top 100 CMCQs, which I uploaded, so now I want to go for 50 more MCQs, which are very most important as per the placements point of view and for uh, who wants to learn the language C effectively. So now we'll see what are those questions. I want to make these 50 questions to, as 10 videos. In each video, I want to explain 5 MCQs. So please watch it uh, carefully. Coming to question number 101. What are i, j values after the execution of this program? So here it is given char s of 100 which is a type of a data type of string and int i, i is a variable of data type integer. I have taken get s to read a string. So it, here it is given assume the input string is given as hello slash n. So I am giving input as hello and slash n. And now i equals print of percent ls s j equals print of hello slash n. So what is i value and what is j value? Let us suppose if I take j, j equals print of hello slash n. Actually when you assign a printf statement to a variable, now the count of that is a number of symbols. Of course if you have slash n, that is a count of number of symbols which includes spaces and escaping sequences and commas, special characters, everything it will include. So when you assign a printf statement to a variable, it will count the number of symbols which are inside the double quotes. Of course, including spaces, escaping sequences, special characters, whatever it may be. So all will be included and that count will be assigned to the variable. Let us suppose if I take this one, j equals printf hello slash n, h e l l o. So totally five symbols here and slash n. In C, slash n means it is a it's a one symbol, it counts as a one symbol. Why? Because slash n combinedly we have one meaning in C. That is slash n means it's a new line character. That means when you write slash n, the whatever the next will be printed on the next line. So slash n combinedly we have a one meaning. That's why slash n counts as only one symbol. It's not two symbols here. So that's why H E L L O and slash n. So totally five plus one, it will give six here. So J value will be 6. Then what about this one? High equals print of percent LSS. That means what is S value we have given? That means hello slash n. So here also is it 6? It's not. Why? Because here you are giving input as H E L L O slash n. That means here slash and n are separate. Like those are two separate symbols. It counts as two separate symbols. That's why here total count will be 5 plus 2 that is 7 will be there. So this is what we need to remember like when you give a string as input that means this escaping sequences or whatever it may be if you write slash zero whatever it may be it counts as diff two symbols whereas if you write inside the printf statement that counts as only one symbol. So the answer will be option B. Coming to the question number one or two. A program reads 500 integers in the range 0 to 100. Representing the scores of 500 students, it then prints the frequency of each score above 50. What will be the best way for the program to store the frequencies? So here it is asking like there are 500 integers. So 500 integers representing the scores of 500 students. Let us suppose you take the students, 500 students are there like 1, 2, 3, 4 like this up to 500. There are 500 students and integers in the range of 0 to 100 representing the scores. So for each student you have to store the marks or score whatever it may be. The score might be it is in between 0 to 100. Might be he will give the first student will get something like 70, second student 60, something like third student something like 75. Like this totally 500 values you need to store. Now it is asking it then prints the frequency of each score above 50. Now here in this marks I want to store how many students who got that means above 50 that means who got 51. How many students got 51? How many students got 52? How many students got 53? Like this you need to store up to how many students got 100. Anyway the range is between 0 to 100. But in that I want to store only above 50. That means 
how many students got 51 52 like this so here it is asking what would be the best way for this the program to store the frequencies so here you need to store these values so what is the best way it is asking anyway if you observe here I need to store 51 52 53 54 for each one I need to store one count value so can I take like this like a of 51 a of 52 like this up to a of 100 I can take so let us suppose what is a of 51 let us suppose the value is 8 means so how many students got the marks are 51 means 8 number of students a of 52 something like 20 that means 52 how many students got 52 means 20 students like this we need to store let us suppose if I take like this I need to take an array of maximum sizes of course a of 100 you are storing no so maximum size should be 101 actually but the size should be 101 that means a of an array of 101 numbers is required but is there any other best way yes we have why should I start from 51 I can start from a of 0 only that means a of 0 represents who got the marks 51 a of 1 represents who got marks 52 a of 2 represents who got marks 53 like this a of 49 represents who got marks that has 100 so like this I can store if this is the way I, I can follow the last one is a of 49 that means a of 0 to 49 means the array size should be maximum of 50 is enough of course you can take a of 101 also but the, what is the best way a of 50 is also enough you can take that means a of 0 will take who got the marks of 51 a of I'm writing here a of 0 will be taken by who got the marks are 51 a of 1 who got the marks are 52 like this a of 49 who got the marks are 100 like this I can store the count so in order to do this one I require an array which is a maximum size is 50 that is enough so that's why which option is correct here it is giving 101 numbers 50 500 and 550 so I require enough that is 50 only so option B is the correct answer now coming to question number 103 here it is about the logical operators that is double end and double R so what is W value what is X what is Y what is Z value so i equals to 5 j equals minus 2 k equals 0 it is given now we need to find which is a correct now anyway in general we think that okay we need to go with i logical or j or uh, after that you need to go for logical or with k like this but you need to remember one thing there is a operator precedence we have you can see here there are logical and and logical or if you have more than one logical and of course the associativity is from left to right if it is logical or also of course left to right but if you have one logical and one logical or the priority is always logical and first so this is operator precedence table if you take two operators which is on the top will be first priority between any two operators let us suppose if I take uh, multiplication and plus which is on the top multiplication that's why multiplication will be the highest priority compared to the addition so highest priority of all is this is top left one that is braces like this if you consider for this one we will see the first one w equals to i logical or j anyway we know that logical or means if both the values are 0 then only 0 otherwise 1 whereas logical and if both the values are 1 then only 1 otherwise 0 so this is of uh, we have to follow that truth table now if you consider w equals to uh, what is i value 5 anyway two logical arts in that case we need to follow left to right associativity so 5 means non zero j value minus 2 again non zero non zero or non zero the resultant is 1 and logical or k value what is k value 0 1 or 0 1 or 0 means true or false is always true so that's why the w value is 1 now here two logical and operators anyway again left to right associativity i and j what is i value 5 j value minus 2 so both are non-zero that means both are true non-zero means true and zero means false we need to consider so true and true is true only next after the double end of k what is k value 
k value is 0 so if you take 0 means false so true and false is false so that's why x value is false means you have to take it as 0 what about this one i double r j and double and k now we need to consider there are no same or logical operators in this line one is logical r and one is logical n so now we need to remember that which is having highest priority so now definitely j double and k that is double and is the highest priority so first you do the operation of j double and k so what is j value minus 2 minus 2 means non-zero which is true double and k value is 0 false so true and false is always false now you need to go for i what is i value 5 which is true that means true or now what is the answer for j double and k false so true or false is true only so like this you need to consider now true or false is true only the value is 1 so the value of y is 1 now z equals to double and and r so anyway double and and r double and is the highest priority first you do i double and j what is i value 5 5 means true double and j value j value minus 2 minus 2 means non zero again true true and true is true then logical or with k k value is 0 means false so true or false is true true means 1 so the answer is 1 0 1 1 if you print w x y z the answer will be 1 0 1 1 so which option option d is correct answer coming to the question number 104 what is the output of this c program so int k here for loop first statement it is given printf that is flower in double quotes then semicolon printf yellow in double quotes then printf fruits in double quotes now is that an error can i give like this yes we can give like this it's not at all an error now we'll see how the execution starts let us suppose if i write any for loop first will be initialization next some condition next increment or decrement will be there so according to that it will execute and inside you will have statements now how the execution starts first it will take initialization and checks the condition whether it is true or false that is zero or non-zero if it is non-zero then it goes inside the loop then it goes to the increment or decrement now if we see this process the first one is it has to consider the initialization which is before the semicolon what is there before the semicolon this statement so print a flower so that has to be executed first if this is executed first what will be the output flower now after this it has to check the condition what is the condition print of yellow is given anyway condition in the sense here the condition is you can give anything it's not like i less than or equals to j less than. not like that anything you can give a number also here anyway it checks whether it is a zero or non-zero now here print of yellow so this will be executed now it will be yellow will be printed now after printing what is the condition value if you see if i execute print of yellow what is the value i told you like if printf statement what is the value of a printf statement means number of symbols inside the double quotes how many symbols are there one two three four five six and of course i have given one space seven total count is seven so the condition value is seven now check it out is it zero or non-zero if it is non-zero goes inside the for loop if it is zero comes out of the for loop so that is what the execution now it is non-zero so that's why it goes inside the for loop in that for loop you have break break means comes out of the block Im immediately so it comes out of the for loop and it never again goes to the for loop so it comes out and program ends now you see what will be the output you are getting flower and yellow anyway this print of fruits will not be executed so the output will be flower and yellow so option c is the correct now coming to question number 105 it is about the conditional operator i equals 3 j equals 5 it is given now k equals to 0 that conditional operator 1 colon j so in conditional operator we'll have a condition if it is true first value will be taken otherwise second value will be taken now if you see here what is the condition value directly 0 i told you like let us suppose if the situation is like this a less than b 
condition a colon b that means if a less than b then a value will be taken to c or else b value will be taken so that means let us suppose a value is 5 b value is 7 is that 5 less than 7 is it true yes so that's why a value will be taken to c if this is false let us suppose if i take something like 10 5 10 is less than 5 false so b value will be taken like this it will be now it will check that condition if the condition value is 0 or non zero true means always non zero that is one F false means always zero now if you see here here the direct condition value is zero that means directly it will take the false value so if it if the condition value is non zero it takes the first value that is one if the condition value is zero it takes the second value so here directly it is zero that's why it is taking the second value what is the second value j so what is the value of j five so k value will be assigned to that is five will be assigned to k so output will be five it is not at all an error so which option is correct option b is correct we'll see some more questions in the next video lecture thank you